Billy, sit. Hey everyone, so in this episode today, I'm gonna to try and get Billy to pick a dead bird. And the reason for that is, Billy, concentrate, mate, um, is he's very natural for hunting for a retrieve, but I want him to make a connection on a correlation between the sense, the natural sense on the floor, where birds had previously been with something that he might get to pick. So I'm not gonna to do tons and tons once I've got him retrieving a bird, but I just want him to get to associate the smell of a bird with what he's hunting for. Once I've gone that, I'll only do sporadic retrieves because he's only super young. Um, he does love to retrieve and retrieves pretty much anything, but a bird is a different matter. So I just wanna see if I can get him picking that first, just so that he has that correlation. Then I'm gonna do some straight uh, memory and blind retrieves, getting him to hunt a small area out. Come on, Billy. Heel. Right, so I have got here a dead cock bird, which funny enough, I picked up off the road. Yes, it was still warm when I picked it up, which was great. Now, what I'm starting off here is I've got a two pound dummy. I've got a pheasant pelt wrapped around that. You can get those on my Facebook page, Spaniel Training Kit. I've then cut off a couple of cock bird wings that I've elastic banded on the side, along with some cock bird feathers. Uh, I'm gonna make sure he's happy picking this first, then I'm gonna try and trick him into picking a cock bird. I think it'll be a bit funny at first, because um, when he's encountered uh, the odd bird out hunting, he's more scared of them at the moment than he is interested in them, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. So I'm gonna try and get him to pick this first. Come on in. I'm gonna keep this nice and fun. He has picked similar before. Good boy, good boy. So I've been using a pheasant pelt for a little while, um, but not any cop, uh, not any wings around it or any tail feathers. So I'll do a more formal retreat this time. Dead. Here, sit. Sit. He's keen, that's for sure. Heel. Good boy. I'm going to turn him around. Here, sit. Put my whistle in my mouth. Sit. Sit. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Sit. Good lad. Good boy. Dead. Heel, good boy, sit. I'm gonna put this out, ah, ah, ah. see he's so keen on this, it's not a bad thing. We'll have to work on that behavior. Right, sit. Billy, heel, I'm gonna do another send. Here, Wait. Good boy, good boy. Now what you'll notice here is I'm moving backwards because he tends to come at me quite quickly. If I slow him down gently, I've got a better chance of sitting him up, which is obviously what I want. Dead, dead. Right, I'm gonna do one more. Heel, good boy, good boy. Here, heel, good boy, sit. Good boy, good boy. So I'm gonna stand up at the last second, move back a little bit, hand under his chin, he's holding the retrieve while I'm giving him a nice rub on the chest. Good lad, I'm gonna take it with my left hand stand up and say heel and we back to heel heel good boy see sit right so we're going to try with this cock bird now i think he's probably gonna be scared of it more than he's interested even though it's very very similar to what i'm throwing out i'm just going to let him run in to start with good boy good boy yeah good lad good boy good boy good boy good boy dead dead good lad heel Right, I'm gonna make him sit now. Sit. Well, that went a lot better than what I was expecting. I thought he was gonna faff with that. In the early stages of picking a bird, I'll come a bit closer to the camera. Billy, sit. In the early stages of picking a bird, I don't care if they pick it by the tail, the wing, the neck or anything. I just want them to have a go. So it normally takes a while. It's not about strength. It's about confidence and technique with birds. I've covered this with Charlie when I did some game introduction a few months back. If you look down through my feed on my videos, you'll be able to see that one in the introducing game. I'm not gonna go over that again. I'm gonna do a couple more like that. That's all I wanna do. Because he's picked it so well, so quickly. It's brilliant, really. Sit. Heel. Good boy. Good boy, Billy. Good boy, here. Sit. Sit. Good boy, good boy. Come in, good lad. Lots of encouragement, good boy. He's only got it lightly, but that's fine. Dead, dead, 
Right, one more like that. Ah, 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 ah. Come on, be good. Good boy. One more like that. Sit. Sit. He's a bit unsteady with this, but I don't mind because I don't want to be tough on him when I'm trying to get him to do something that he's not sure about. Heel. I'll do it as a bat retrieve this time. Heel. Sit. Split. Good lad. Good lad. Good boy. Dead. Dead. Natural. Good lad. Well done. Good boy. Heel. Sit. So... I think that went as possibly well as it could be. If you watch Charlie's one, as I said, he faffed a lot at the beginning. So watch that one. It'll give you the confidence. So I'm going to go in this field now. One of the things that I'm working on with him is sending him down a nice straight line um, to hunt an area out for a retrieve. A lot of Spaniels, when you're, when you're doing straight sends and memories, if you're doing them on the grass field, that's lovely and nice and straight and it helps them. A lot of Spaniels, if they're not 100% sure, and you hit a little bit of longer cover, they can run and then just suddenly start hunting because that's their natural instinct to do that. So I'm trying to slowly build up him running down a fence line in longer grass and then hopefully hunting an area out. So we're gonna give that a go now, Billy. Come on, now. good boy. Right, so we've got a nice lane here. You can see this is nice tussocky grass here. And as I said, a lot of Spaniels, when you send them in a straight line, great on, on short grass and on a track, but when you start making them a bit more challenging, maybe they're a semi-blind or a blind, they might run a very short distance and then start hunting. And so you want to build on that distance very, very gradually to that same area. That way you build the dog's confidence. I'm going to pre-plant a couple of dummies here. I've got a tennis rabbit skin tennis ball, which are a lot harder to find. So I'm going to pop that one down there. That might be quite tough. I've got one of my 150 gram rabbit skin dummies, which I'm going to put just a little bit further apart. What I'm not doing is putting them right on top of each other because the chances are that he'll try, if he picks one and finds the other, um, he could end up trying to swap dummies. I don't want that. The retrieve that I'm going to get him to start off picking, which he really likes, is this pheasant one. And I'm going to try and throw it a little bit ahead of those other two retrieves. That way, at the beginning, when I'm building on that momentum, he's always finding this one first, not accidentally overshooting it, picking one of the other ones and then coming over the top of this and then trying to swap dummies. So I'm going to go get him now. Right, so Billy, sit. Um, I'm going to make these first retrieves quite short. Billy, I'm going to make these first quite, uh, they're what I call filler retrieves. It's just trying to get that dog running to that same area. And then I might try one or two. I did a little bit of stop work yesterday with him and he went a little bit funny with me. So I don't know if that's going to have some residue today. We'll just have a look. Here we go sit now to start off with i'm just going to be very obvious so when i throw a dummy what i don't do which is what i see a lot of people do they stand in front of the dog and they throw it like that which means you're blocking the dog's view so i always like to step out to the side and make sure the dog had a good view on that retrieve good boy heel so i'm going to do this nice and short to start with here sit Split. Good boy. Good boy, sit. Good boy, dead. Sit. So that's the first one. I'm probably gonna have to move the camera back in a minute to do a little bit further. So I'm gonna throw that one out again. Sit. A bit keen, aren't you? Heel. In fact, I'm gonna move the camera further this time. Sit. Look. Running out nice and straight, that's good. Bit of hunt whistle. Okay, that's exactly what I was talking about. Good boy. See, even the best lay plans go wrong. Dead, dead. So, you know I love making a mistake. But I did try and do everything there to make that happen. I threw this nice and short, but he still overshot this one. Picked the other one and then swapped dummies. It's not the end of the world. Don't panic about that at this stage. Um, so I'm going to make sure I put this one a bit closer this time. Sit, Billy. Sit. These things happen, don't they, Billy? Heel. Right. So we're going to move the camera a bit more again. We're doing a little bit further again. Sit. Wait, wait. That little bit of hesitation I was talking about. 
Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Someone told me off the other day on YouTube for saying good boy too much. But I like to praise them when they're doing stuff that I want. Good boy. Dead. Dead. Sit. I'm going to put it out again. And then increase that distance once again. Boy, heel. Billy. Boy, sit. Break. Break. Seat. Good boy. Good lad. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Dead. Dead. Sit. So you can see what I was saying earlier about he's still got that bit of residue from me doing some stop work with him yesterday. So I won't do any more stop work with him for a little while. It's like trying to find what the right balance is for each dog. So this now, there's two other dummies there. He's obviously found one. He might sort of know that that's there, but this is how you build on it. And what I'm going to try and do is do the similar things that I'd done before without actually throwing a dummy. So I'm going to walk him down. Sit. I'm just going to sort of do what I might normally do. Billy. Here, sit. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. Good boy. Turn around. I'm going to do a bit of a clap this time as well. Right. He did that better than the ones he'd marked. Good boy, good boy, sit, good boy, well done, dead, dead, sit. So we've got another one there, the, the ball, I'm going to see if we can get him to pick that this time, sit. Later on I would put in, a, um, I often use a starting pistol, haven't done any gun work with either of these two yet, but later on that can be a real help to aid the dog to have the confidence to run out. We're going to walk him forward a little bit. Good boy. I'm going a bit closer, sit, because these aren't marked retrieves. So I'm trying to help him out a little bit. Right. He loves the clap. He's hunting nicely there. That's good. Figuring it out. There we go. Lovely. Good boy. Sit. Right. I would normally do a little bit more than what I'm going to do. Now, my next little trick that I sometimes do, dead, heel, sit, and you have to do this with a dummy, is I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to pop Billy, sit. I'm going to use the toggle dummy this time, the 150 ground. I'm going to stick that underneath my armpit with the toggle hanging out. I'm going to walk down and do what I'm going to do. And if I can get him to run out, so there isn't a retrieve there, as he runs out, I'm going to try and throw the retriever his head. Now, it only works occasionally, as in, like, you should only do it occasionally, because if the dog catches you throwing the retriever over their head, they can start to look back and not run out. But you can normally get away with this for one or two if you do it right. Sit. Good boy. Bit of a clap. Right. Just the wrong side of the wind at the moment. We'll get there, I'm sure. Finally. Good boy. Good boy. Well done. Good lad. Good lad, good lad, and sit. Now, what you have to do when you do it like that is you must throw it out as they're running out. If you wait for them to get down there and they've turned and faced you and they see you throwing that retrieve over, then you won't get away with doing that again. So it only works one or two times. I don't like to do it all the time, but it's a great way of doing another retrieve without walking out, putting a retrieve down, 
So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that, considering yesterday I did a bit of stop work with him and this is his main issue that I've got to work through. I'm sure we'll get there, is that he doesn't like being stopped. He thinks he's always done something wrong, which is very typical. It makes him very, very sticky. As long as I don't press too hard and I don't do day after day of the same thing, um, normally they'll come round to it. Anyway, that was a good little session. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Any questions, drop them down in the description. Happy training, guys.